All right, welcome back for part two of how to create a plastic sippy cup with lid. If you missed part one, go back. That's where I show you how to create all of these pieces in Adobe Illustrator that we're gonna use in this part two to assemble our object. If you're following along and you've got all of your OBJ files, let's go. Now I'm opening a new canvas in Adobe Dimension and what I always do is start at the zoom and I click on 100%. And I always make this canvas much larger because I want a high resolution render. So I go to like, how about 2005? That was a good year, right? Um, we'll, we'll pick that one. And then resolution I set to 300 because that's going to give us a high quality finished product. Sometimes at 72 it's really grainy and just looks like crap. So I always pick 300 and make sure that my canvas size is at least 2000 pixels wide. Now I'm ready to start dragging in my OBJ files. And I start bottom to top because I tend to want to ground things on the base plane and get everything situated. So just at a glance, I'm really liking the shape. This is that overhead angle that the reference image showed and I'm really liking the curvature here at the bottom. It's very similar to what's there, so that's great. Um, if your reference image is a slightly different zippy cup, then you could go and tweak and re-export. Um, there's nothing wrong with going back and making it just right. But I'm happy with this. Now I'm gonna use my positioning tools like Orbit and a few others just to make sure that I have everything in place. I like having the horizon line more parallel with the canvas because it helps me when I'm making my camera bookmarks, which is what I'll show you now. So I'm coming over to this camera with a star in the corner, and these are your camera bookmarks. So I'll click on the plus sign, it'll give me a field to type in, and this will be my front view. And that way, if I move things around like such, and I just I can't remember where the front is, I have these handy bookmarks that take me back to those different angles that I want. And I can also use these when I'm rendering so that I can render all of the different angles I want to show and not have to position, render, position, and render. Like I can just batch render and watch a TV show while it's working for me. The next piece I'm going to bring in is this lid. And I forgot to mention because I just wanted to make this solid for this purpose, but um, this is not a hollow object either. Like when I rotate and show you the inside, it's solid. So if that was something that you really needed to have, um, like we talked about for transparency purposes, then you'll need to follow the same step as the cup where you make an inset um, with the open bottom but yeah, just follow the steps for the cup, but for the lid and flip it around. All right, so now I'm bringing the sippy cup lid over and let me label these. We have lid and we have cup and I'm going to align these so that they overlap. All right, let me get the lid positioned. And now I'm noticing if I look at my reference that the lid is just a little bit too tall for a reference image. So that's an easy fix though, and I don't even have to go back to Illustrator. I come to the size panel and I make sure that the lock is not clicked because all I wanna do is adjust the height, which in this case is the Z value. So instead of 2.99, I'm going to try 2.5. And that makes it just a little bit shorter, which is much closer to our reference material. I'm much happier with that. Next, I'll drag in that detail piece, that donut. And as I'm rotating, you can hold shift and it will lock the dimensions in place. So instead of ending up with a weird number like 93, you end up with 90. And again, I'll just select all of these layers, come to the align tool and go center, center. And since I want these to all stay together, I'm also going to group them um, just by clicking this folder and name this the cup. And then lastly, I'm gonna rotate around on the orbit tool and drop in the straw, the sippy nozzle part. And just holding shift and rotating at 90 degree angles until we have our shape. I'm gonna select that cup and the straw, come to the align panel and only choose align center on one of the angles because it is based on our reference image, it is to the side, it's not in the center center, it's more like center top. So I'm going to replicate that here by just only aligning to one center area. 
And then if I come back to the front, I can select both of these and rotate it around until it's at the angle that I want. The plastic on the cup has this little bit of roughness and it almost has a like grippy texture. So I wanna see if I can replicate that here. This one is plastic with, plastic with what? Plastic with lattice pattern. What about plastic with canvas? Oh, uh, what if I do plastic with a lattice pattern and then I repeat it a lot? Where does this get us? If I increase the pattern to 7.8%, that gives us some texture. And I'll choose the base color. Let me see what seven looks like. This might give us a better grippy texture. Yeah, you can definitely tell in the highlights that it's more grippy. That's perfect. And I'll click and bring plastic to the lid pieces here because it is shinier than the grippy part. And on these, I have to come to each one individually and click on lid and make sure that it's back to our green color. And then what I can also do to highlight the grippy texture a little bit is add a three point light. I just click and drag over top. And now when I go to our render preview, you can see that it hits more of the highlights. It might be a little overexposed. Um, if I come to our environment light and bring down the intensity, that will help with some of that glare. And then once you have a shape and you're happy with it um, and you're ready to render, come up here to the top left and click on render. This is where you can click on the camera bookmarks. They'll be saved right here. You can add something to the name, choose where you want to save it, and then click this blue render button and then just wait for it to be done. And here's the final result. All right, and that wraps up how to make a sippy cup 3D mock-up. Thanks again, Natalia, for the suggestion for this video. I hope you found this helpful. Comment below with what tutorial you'd like to see next. And as always, subscribe so that you know when my next videos are coming out. All right, until next time, designers.